So far I've been giving mostly historical proofs of the Swiss being responsible for wars and crimes against humanity and actual facts and video footage concerning Switzerland's violence, organized terror and hatred towards immigrants and other races. But there exists also scientific proofs that the Swiss are an entirely different species, nowhere else to be found in Europe. And I told you so. They are no Europeans and Switzerland is the base of Pharaoh. Me personally have never witnessed so much evil, so many organized lies of such utterly mean intensity as in Switzerland. And this is what makes people out, what they have in their heads. And let me tell you, what the Swiss have in their heads is so very different from the rest of humanity that I might call their inhibitions alien, in maybe more than one sense of the word. And the things we have in our minds are being confined by the skull, as in skull and bones, you might say. It's also the form and size of the skull that defines the size of the brain and its intellectual capacity, and even tendency for crimes can thus be predicted. And this is why Freemasons, who came out of the Templars who founded Switzerland, present the skull with square and compass for craniometry, because they know their skull and bones, I repeat, skull and bones, are different from ours. And this science of the human skull is called craniometry or cephalometry. And it has been discovered by science, doctors and professors, that the Swiss have skulls nowhere else to be found in Europe. This may be leading to the entirely different Swiss universe highly predestined for organized crime. So in this scientific research by Dr. Ripley from um, um, America, uh, it shows a cephalic index of Europe and of the world, which I'm going to show you later. Uh, and I'll put the link in the description, as I always do, so you can verify and examine the scientific analysis of the crani craniometrical map of Europe you yourselves. And you can see by this craniometri craniometry that the Swiss are neither Germans, French or Italians. Because Europeans don't fit these cranial characteristics, this is another species, either talking German, French or Italian. And there's even an official name for the Swiss skull called brachycephalic, cephalic meaning concerning the skull, which is being seen from above, a relatively short and quite round skull. Whereas the rest of the Europeans, seen from the top, have long skulls and not round, called dolicocephalic. So this one here, and I'm, kind of, I'm going to show you this on the uh, cephalic map of Europe in a moment. This is the Swiss uh, brachycephalic skull form, which is only be found in Switzerland in Europe. You're going to see that. This is European the dolicocephalic or long skulls, so long as being seen from the top, long from here to here. And this is quite short and broader, like here in the back. Well, we've seen aliens like this, haven't we? This is going deep, folks. You better copy it first, download it, because I've got a feeling the Swiss are going to delete it very, very quickly. And then it's gone. So here's a cephalic map, cephalic index of Europe. And here where it's black, you know, it's like a cancer in the middle of Europe, and it is a cancer. There's a high concentration of for Europe alien skull forms. Alien as they don't belong to Europe. You can see that. They're not here. They're not here, not even in the south, a little bit in Italy. Now, well, here's Rome, but here's a very high concentration, it says. Um, they're not from here, you can see it. Well, 
definitely not. The cephalic map of Europe shows a neat distinction starting right at the Swiss border where on both sides of the border around Switzerland the people have entirely different skulls exactly showing that in Switzerland there's an entirely different species with different skulls and what's inside these skulls. So you can read it again here of the cephalic index of Europe where it's black it means they're broad skulls and they're not European. So here this here is Switzerland here these are the borders here's France Germany uh, for Alberg where they are Swiss so you can see it stops right neat at the border you know here in France and here in Switzerland have a completely different skull form. It's like chopped off, you know, neat, clean cut at the border. Here. So, and these parts are Alsace here, where they replaced the original uh, population. As I told you, they're ethnic Swiss here, as in the north of Italy here, and in Austria, for Alberg. I'm a bit surprised it doesn't show black here in the south of Germany. Very surprised, but it is dark anyway. It's not like here, like the, the rest of Europe is white, long skulls. So here's, it's like a cancer in the middle of Europe and they behave like a cancer. They are the cancer of Europe. So, well, ex except for those regions uh, of what I told you, the ethnic Swiss are living where Swissy replaced the original inhabitants during the Thirty Year War, when Swiss mercenaries perpetrated a total genocide on the original inhabitants of Alsace in eastern France, for Alberg in Austria, they call them the Xieberger, as they because they talk like in Switzerland, northern Italy and southern Germany, where they speak in fact Alemannic Swiss German today. And want to create that great Swiss empire, including that ethnic Swiss buffer zone, of which I've already told you all in some of my previous films. So here are the irrefutable scientific proofs of all I told you before, which even scientific craniometry double backs up. So if we look at the cephalic index of the world, you can clearly see that this is the place where the Swiss come from, here. Mongolians, Genghis Khan. And they got their little concentration here in the middle of Europe, in the Alps. Uh, from a place called also Khazaria, the Khazars. Now this is where the Khazars went to in the middle of our beautiful Europe and destroying it bit by bit. And when I translate Khazar in Demotic Pharaonic, there's Ka, the living soul, and Sa, the king or pharaoh. So Khazar means soul king. Well, these black dudes were like that, who think that the, the pharaohs were black, the soul kings. <laughs> Meaning that these royal bloodline of Pharaoh is there. Their souls of kings are there. And they went to Switzerland, the base of all evil, where the Khazars went to and the Mongolians. And who are in fact of Pharaonic origin. I mean, how could the Mongolians organize anyway? They're never with Genghis Khan in such a way, you know. that They are they're completely incapable by themselves to organize in such a way Genghis Khan did. So they they must have had another brain behind it, you know. And that's the that's Pharaonic. And they, they also went they went to different places in the world, like Khazaria and Mongolia. So this is concerning the skulls and this is very scientific. This is where the Swiss come from. This is why they don't want to belong to the European community. And I tell you, they rule over the European community with their Templars. So, the skull forms, because they mix with the Mongolians, the Swiss did. 
concerning the uh, craniometry. I mean, it's there. These are solid proofs, eh? They're very, very solid. This is where they come from. This is where they came from. This is the original Swaziland. They're not European. It's a cancer, a black cancer. You can see that, a black cancer in the middle of our Europe, bringing two world wars, a 30-year war, killing everybody, etc., etc. And I, I tell you, I know how they are. There are no Europeans. I, I've, I've never experienced something alike. So I hear again in Wikipedia about craniometry here. If I scroll down, this is quite interesting. Some of you racists <laughs> might like this. But I tell you, it's wrong. So here it talks about the Jews and brachycephalic. So, yeah. So the only ones having the same skulls are the Jews. So the Swiss, in fact, have Jew skulls of the brachycephalic order. Now, how come the Swiss and the Jews share the same cephal cephalometry? Whereas the Swiss have always terrorized and chased the Jews, forcing them to live in the two villages of Endingen and Langnau, which I've already shown you in my other video, right at the German border, only forcing them to wear the yellow Jew hat in the Middle Ages and other Nazi-like Swiss measures. Well, why? Well, this is the Pharaonic link. So I filmed it in this video here uh, two years ago um, when I went filming in those two Jew villages, Lengnau and Endingen, and the Jews finally disappeared entirely from Switzerland as they were completely terrorized. So in spite of the fact they have the same skull form, they don't have the same thing in their heads. And this is what the Swiss uh, forced them to wear in the Middle Ages, this round yellow thing like the yellow star, and a yellow Jew hat. So they finally got fed up with it and left. But why? still, why do they have the same skull form? Oh, I'm going to explain it to you now. The Jews were 410 years prisoner of Pharaoh, had their women raped by Pharaoh, and the Swiss had their women raped by the aristocracy through the Prime Noctis, uh, or the Lord's First Rite or also, you might say, the first night, thus massively spreading Pharaoh's genetics in Pharaoh's base, Switzerland, and they were raised by Pharaoh, as I've already told you so. So here's another particularity of the Swiss um, crano craniometry. It says Alpine. This is the Alpine skull form which is brachycephalic. But if you look at the rear of the head, there's another difference. Uh, this is Nordic, you know, this is bump here, or Mediterranean, it's the same, or Atlantic. Here's nothing, it just goes straight over into the neck, you know, which is the same in the East Baltic, where you're going to, you go to the Khazar region. So, it's only Alpine in, in, in Central Western Europe. It's only Alpine having this, together with the brachycephalic skull form. You, know, you remember the black cancer in the middle of Europe. So maybe, so nowhere else this particular brachycephalic head form can be found in Europe, except Switzerland and the ethnic Swiss parts. The Swiss are definitely not what we think they are. They are no real Europeans, and maybe even something completely else. As I've witnessed on many occasions in Switzerland, that they seem to understand each other without talking and just through the look of an eye. They always seem to stare at people as if they see right through and detect something they don't like. And there are many things they don't like in Switzerland on which they use their laws of silence, organizing through some creepy look of the eye among themselves. 
The biggest races in the world are in fact illegal immigrants themselves in our Europe, hiding on top of the mountain with, their all, with all their looted gold and their Swiss short heads.